Hello and welcome. May the peace, love and hope of God be with us all. Welcome wherever you are, whoever you are, whenever you're finding this and however you're doing. I hope we all know that we are gathered together in God's love, bound together by God's love as a new community of love. Today I invite us all to find ourselves within the Bible story we're hearing, the Bible story told in John chapter 12 verses 1 to 8. Today I'm going to share an imaginative meditation on that passage, John 12, 1 to 8. And I hope in that we might all be helped to encounter God, the living God, within this story of from Jesus' life. And you may find it helps to close your eyes, to let your imagination wander, so that we can meet God wherever God needs to meet us. Let's open ourselves to God, to God meeting us here, wherever we are, as we listen together. Come Holy Spirit, be in our listening and in our imagining. We imagine ourselves in Bethany, just across the valley from Jerusalem. It's six days before the Passover festival. Things are busying up as people prepare for that. Jerusalem is buzzing, and Bethany too. And there's an even greater buzz about the house you're going into. This is the house of Lazarus, Martha and Mary. It's not long since Lazarus got really ill and since Lazarus died and was buried. It's only days since, Laz since Jesus got round to visiting Mary and Martha and raised their brother Lazarus from death, bringing him out of his tomb. Everyone is still talking about it. There's lots of chat about Lazarus, about what really happened, about how he's been since. And there's lots of rumours about Jesus, about who he is, and that the religious leaders see him as a troublemaker, that the authorities want to arrest him. You are in Bethany, amongst all this buzz and fuss. You find yourself in Mary, Martha and Lazarus' house, at dinner with them, with Jesus and with Jesus' disciples. You're gathered for a meal. Who are you in this gathering? Are you Mary? Are you Martha? Are you Lazarus? Are you Jesus or one of his followers? Are you someone else observing all that's going on? Who are you in this story? Where are you in the room? Are you at the table with others? Are you coming and going with food and drink? Are you tucked out of the way? The meal is going on. Martha is helping to serve it. Lazarus is sitting at the table with Jesus and the others. What do you see? What are you hearing from in the house or from outside? What can you smell? Is the food smelling good? Are you curious about whether Lazarus smells or looks or sounds different from before? What are you seeing and hearing and smelling?
Now the meal is being interrupted. It's Mary, one of Lazarus' sisters. She's come to the table carrying a jar. She's kneeling down and pouring the jar's contents onto Jesus' feet. Can you see what she's doing? Are you Mary doing it? And now the smell hits you. Mary's pouring perfume onto Jesus' feet. There must be a lot of it. The smell fills the room. A sweet smell. Do you like it? Is it welcome or overpowering? And Mary's not stopped at emptying the jar. She's on the floor and she's let her hair down. And now she's wiping Jesus' feet with her hair. You see what she's doing. Or maybe you're G Mary doing all this. How do you feel? How surprised are you by such a public display of emotions? Are you embarrassed? Or delighted? Or confused? Or something else? How do you feel? You become aware that there are different reactions around the room. Jesus seems pleased. Others don't know where to look. And Judas Iscariot speaks up. Why wasn't this perfume sold and the money given to the poor? It is an expensive jar. It would be worth a fair sum. It could buy a lot of bread for those who are in need. What do you find yourself thinking? Is Judas right? Is this a waste in an extravagant gesture? Or is there something more important going on to do with gratitude and love? Now Jesus speaks. Leave her alone, he says. She, he's defending Mary and what she's done with all its emotion, all its extravagance, all its seeming waste. He reminds you, he reminds you that there are plenty of opportunities to help the poor. You pause. Do you, do we take all the other chances we have to help others to give from what we have? And Jesus is also saying something about his burial. He's talking as if that's quite soon. Does he know something? Has he heard the rumours about the authorities out to get him? But he's also God's messenger. Will God not protect him? He raised Lazarus from his tomb, so surely he's powerful enough to avoid death. You ponder that darker note, looking towards death. How do you feel about that? For Jesus? For yourself? We've all got so much still to learn from Jesus, but we can't stay much longer in the house with him. Crowds are gathering. Before we go back out into the buzz and busyness, you catch Jesus' eye. Is there something you want to ask him? Is there something you want to say to him? And is there anything he says to you? You hear what Jesus says. He looks at you with total love, as if you were the most important person to him in this moment. Because you are. Let yourself feel that love. And now you have to leave that house. You have to leave that time and place. You come back out of that room and find yourself back to this time and this place.
wherever you are. And Jesus is still here. And Jesus still loves you as a most important person to him right now. Amen. I invite you to join me in prayer as we continue to give our attention to God. Let us pray. God of life, look on us with love and accept the thanks we offer to you, whether it seems paltry or extravagant. God of life, thank you for Jesus living beside us, sharing grief and loss and joys and hopes, eating and drinking with us, gathering us with others as your church. Help us to do the same for others. Help us to be with others, accompanying each other through good times and bad, sharing food, drink and all that we have to make a difference. God of life, thank you for the Holy Spirit pouring out gifts on each of us so that together we can bring your ways closer. Help us to use all that we have been given to share your love extravagantly. Help us to speak up against injustice, to care for creation and people in need, and to be guided by you always. God of life, look on us with love and accept all that we offer of ourselves and our prayers through Jesus Christ, our friend and our teacher. Amen. And now may we go, knowing that we are loved by God and sharing that love extravagantly knowing that we are given new life through Jesus and living that life abundantly, knowing we are given each other in the Spirit and seeking life together in all that we do, and the blessing of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with us and go through us to all the world, this day, this week and always. Amen. <laughs>